The hospital is broken up into small animal companion animals, so that stereotypically is going to be cats and, and dogs. Then we have a large animal, which is broken up into equine and rural animal medicine, where you're going to have sheep, goats, pigs, llamas, cows. And then we have exotics, which can be anywhere from pot belly pigs to fish to black rhino, cats, tortoises, turtles, lizards, snakes. There's a huge initiative in veterinary medicine to really adopt model-based training. Our whole curriculum is actually being redone now to incorporate more clinically relevant, more clinically focused scenarios. Something as simple as what we call an otic exam or an ear exam. In humans, it's much easier to give an ear exam than it is in an animal. There are no real good models for them to get hands-on experience with but a veterinarian developing this model-based curriculum. She asked me, well, could we develop an ear model? I ended up printing up six pairs of ears. She implanted them into these stuffed animals of dogs' heads. NinjaFlex has a you know, rubbery type of feel to it. They can pull on the ears. It has the, the pertinent anatomy that they have to navigate through with the otoscope in order to successfully do it. One of the main motivators of me investing my time to learn Gigabot and to get it here into the vet school was because I knew it would open up doors for all of these other avenues. The surgical models is a very easy example of that. We've had a couple clinicians, both from neurology and from orthopedics, who have come to me and asked from a CT or MR, could I print up some anatomical issue? What happens is they sit down with, with a radiologist typically and they will come up with a surgical plan, but they really don't know with 100% certainty at the time that they do it if that is necessarily the optimal approach. So the risk that you run is if they get in there and they realize that it's not an optimal approach, they may have to come at it from a different direction, which means that in many cases, you might have to reclose the route you just came, come at it from a different way. So it potentially increases the morbidity, increases the, the time under anesthesia, increases the cost of the entire thing. What they would like is for me to print out this abnormality so they could actually have a 3D model that they could not only spatially look at and get their hands on, but also potentially be able to perform a procedure on. And if they fail, or if it's not optimal, they can just throw it away. I can print them another one and they can try a different approach. By having these models in place, they know ahead of time going in and it cuts down all of those factors. They've said the models I provided them have pre-operatively altered the course of what they were going to institute originally. It really has changed how they've approached some of these more difficult cases.